Hey there YouTube, a slightly belated answers video, I apologise for that. I actually did make this yesterday, but my computer's playing silly beggars and absolutely destroyed it. So hopefully this time I'll get it to work. So right then, on to your questions. I do hope I've pronounced this right, GD? Is that how you pronounce your username? I hope so. Uh, asks, aside from Transformers, were there any other childhood crazes or TV shows that stick out in your mind as having grabbed you back in the day? Or perhaps even to this day? Uh, I liked most of the 1980s cartoons. I was kind of a fan of them, but none of them have really grabbed me to the same extent as Transformers. They certainly haven't uh, sustained their interest in the same way. I do like Thundercats still. I, I've got a bit of a soft spot for Thundercats. I always loved them. Um... I, I love Visionaries as well. I recently picked up the DVD of Visionaries, just out of curiosity more than anything else, because I don't remember that much about it. But, I'll tell you what, it is probably the best of the 1980s cartoons that I've seen in recent years, with the the exception of the, uh, the Cities of Gold. The Lost Cities of Gold is a beautiful cartoon. It genuinely is brilliant. Um... Well, what, it, what got me about uh, Visionaries is that, unlike most of the 1980s cartoons, it's genuinely funny. Most of the attempts at humour in the 1980s cartoons are really lame. It's also morally ambiguous. The uh, the good guys and the bad guys, the... Um, uh, what are they called? Is it the Celestial Knights and the Darkling Lords, I believe? Operate in a sort of grey area and they constantly shift and change as well, which is rather nice. It's something you don't see very often. And there's genuine character development as well. Even though there's only, I think there's only about 13 episodes, there, there's not many. Which is a great shame. It's vastly superior to the uh, Transformers cartoon. Gen 1 cartoon. And to, to Thundercats as well. But there is one other. There is one other children's show that I was utterly obsessed over and I still love to this day and that was something that was released here in Britain I don't think it got a very wide release around the rest of the world called uh, Nightmare a Nightmare was it wasn't a cartoon it was a sort of uh, game show I suppose a kids game show it was made when children's TV in Britain was aimed at a much wider audience it catered for older children as well young teenagers a Nightmare was certainly aimed at them it was um a sort of uh, product of the virtual reality technology that was only just coming out at that time. It was only just um, occurring as a concept. It was massively ambitious. I've never seen anything quite like it, not on adult TV or on kids' TV. The fact that it was a children's show and it was so incredibly inventive is amazing. But what Nightmare involved was a team of kids, there'd be four of them, one of them would be assigned as the Dungeoneer, and he would be blindfolded by this helmet, and then they would be sent into this virtual dungeon, where they would be guided around by their three advisors who would watch from um, some annexed chamber. And uh, they would guide them around and uh, have them help them to solve puzzles and to interact with the various characters and to avoid monsters and traps and that sort of thing. And there would be three levels to the dungeon. And uh, usually what they had was a specific quest to recover an item or something to that effect. And what was so impressive about Nightmare was not only was it technologically amazing for the time. This is in the mid uh, mid 1980s to late to mid 1990s. It had eight seasons. And it is still one of the most successful children's shows that was ever produced in Britain. It won hundreds of awards because of how ambitious it was and just of the quality of the show. It was one of the very few children's shows that I've ever seen that isn't patronising at all. It's genuinely hard for one thing. The puzzles are so difficult. And there were very, very few winners. Even throughout the entire eight seasons, there weren't many. You can count them on the, the fingers of one hand how many won that show. Um, one other thing that's um, that was so fascinating about it is that the atmosphere, Nightmare was genuinely frightening. There was this um, overwhelming sense of tension because the Dungeoneers were timed. They had this thing that was called the Life Force Meter. And it was like a, a face, uh, a computer-generated face that would gradually break apart to reveal a skull. And that was their life force. If it, or Every part of the skull flaked away, then they died. And they had to replenish it with food that they'd find throughout the dungeon. 
In fact, I will link to a channel in the sidebar that has all the episodes of Nightmare on it, and it's 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 fantastic. Even viewing it as an adult, it's a wonderful show, and there has never ever been anything like it. Ah, uh, Primus eighteen seventy three. Baz asks, "What is the most uh, underrated movie you've seen?" Um, good question. I'm a huge cinema fan. I was actually raised on various kinds of media, and movies have definitely played a massive part in my childhood. Um, oh, the most underrated movie. That's a really good question. I can tell you the one that, um, I think certainly deserves more kudos than it gets, and that is, uh, The Fountain by Darren Aronofsky. I've never known a film to divide opinions so sharply and for the two sides to be so vehement and vitriolic in their opinions. Um, the Fountain is this beautiful metaphysic exploration of self and the, the evolution, the transcendence of self. And it deals with some very, very complicated ideas. And this seems to have alienated a lot of people from it. It's not what you'd call a popular film by any stretch of the imagination. Despite the fact that it received some quite amazing reviews, it also received some scathing, venomous ones as well. But it's certainly one of my favourite films. And it, it's worth watching simply because it's so aesthetically beautiful. It also has one of the very best uh, performances by Hugh Jackman you're ever going to see. I think I actually underrated him uh, until I saw The Fountain. I'd seen him in a couple of roles that I liked him in before, such as um, The Prestige by Christopher Nolan, which is another massively underrated film. It's absolutely beautiful, that film. Well worth watching. But no, his performance in The Fountain is spot-on brilliant. Uh, my good friend Tatimus Prime, Dan, asks... Oh, he's got a series of questions here. Excellent. One, what is your method for writing your poems? Is it forced to do the words just come to you? Oh, excellent question. Um, it depends on the poem. I find that they, they tend to come as and how they wish to come. Um, the shorter ones in particular, it's usually just something that occurs, an idea, and then th that I'll just sit down at the keyboard with that initial spark and enthusiasm in my mind and, and bash it out. Um, it's usually very quick. Like that limerick I did for Stephen Green, that, that actually, I didn't even write that, it just it just occurred in my mind. Then there are others, like um, um, Ode to the Double Helix, for example, where it was initially a much longer poem, with uh, many, many more verses, but then I, I reading through it, rewriting, I realised that everything I wanted to say in the poem was said in just this one paragraph, this one verse, rather. Um, so I just cut all the rest away and that became the poem. But for the uh, the longer poems, it's you usually get that initial spark. But I find that I have to sit down and think about them more. And they usually take a lot longer to produce because I have to actually consciously think about what's going to go into them and where they're going as well. That's something you don't really have to worry about with the shorter poems. Once they're out, they're out and that's it. But... The longer ones, you do have to consider what's redundant and what's not, and uh, whether this verse is necessary, and etc., etc., whether you're just babbling on about nothing, which does happen quite a lot.